Today we're going to talk about stocking up on a year's worth of flour for your family and how we store it. So let's get started. Hey you guys, welcome back to Heartway Farms. I'm Annie and I'm so glad you're here with me today and we are talking about all things stocking up flour. And I had wonderful helpers, Elise and Will, with good attitudes helped me bring up a lot of our supply of flour. I didn't have them bring up everything like all of our different five gallon buckets because I ran out of room on the table. But I wanted to share with you guys what it takes to stock up on a year's supply of flour for your family. And I do things a little differently than some people. So I'm just gonna share that process with all of you and hopefully you enjoy it. And I love to hear from you. I wanna hear how you stock up on flour. What type of flour do you like to store and how do you store it? And yeah, how much do you try to put up for your family? So I'm just gonna share with you what we do. It's always our heart and our desire to encourage people to kind of have a stockpile of food built up for your family just in case life happens. You know, we're not always gloom and doom and thinking that the worst is gonna happen, but we believe in being prepared and being resilient, and that's one of the reasons that we like to have at least a year's supply of food in our home at all times, if we can. And, you know, I think I wanna to touch on this point before we get started because there are seasons, all of us can relate to this, that there are seasons where there is plenty and abundant <laughs> abundance, whether it's in finances or in you know the storehouse or whatever. And then there's seasons where things are tough, you know, whether somebody lost their job or somebody got sick or injured or whatever the case may be. And we just want to encourage you to do the best that you can with what you have. Be grateful for what you have. You know, I'm, today I'm going to show you some things that are organic and I'm going to show you some things that are not organic and that's okay. There have been seasons in my life <laughs> where I have to go to the grocery store and really pinch every penny. But you know what? It's our heart in those situations that matter and we can be grateful Grateful. You know, just like in scripture, we can be grateful when we are in seasons of plenty and we can be grateful in seasons when there's just not a lot to go around. So today I'm just encouraging you to do your very best and just to get started where you're at with what you have. So first of all, there's a couple different uh, stores where I like to stock up from. And one of those locations is from Azure Standard. Now the only bummer about that is I can only get those supplies once a month, but I really like the price. It's good, uh, inexpensive, good quality flour, which comes in the 50 pound bags, and that's what these particular brands are from. Uh, and then I have also stocked up from Country Life Naturals. I have had a hard time getting wheat berries from Azure Standard. I've been able to find plenty of ground flour, but I have 100 pounds of whole wheat berries, and I did get those from Country Life Naturals. And then um, last but not least, one of the places I stock up from is Costco. And they have these, unfortunately they don't have 50 pound bags, which, you know, maybe that's, that could be good or bad because it, it is much easier to deal with these 10 pound, 10 pound bags as opposed to these huge bags. Thankfully, I have lots of helpers. Like I said, William is always willing to help me muscle stuff <laughs> around here, which is a blessing. So those are the three main uh, locations where I try to get flour. We've actually had some flour gifted to us. One of my bags is from Sam's Club. We have some smaller amounts of like spelt and whole wheat. Those are from those, those other stores that I mentioned before. So those are the locations where I try to buy flour from. So I'm sure many of you have done research, uh, like I have as well, on like how much should I stock up on or have in the house of this product, whether it's rice or flour, whole grains, pasta, all of that. And if you're like me, you have seen every number and every estimation that you can imagine. And really there's not a lot of consistency with it. So I'm gonna share with you what we do. And I'm sure that many of you do things differently and that's okay, but I'm just gonna share the process and then I'm gonna show how, how I store our flour. But I'm just gonna share with like my numbers, how I come up with it. So um, with our flour and our size family, uh, we do, just for some background, we do a ton of cooking and baking at home. And when I'm thinking stockpile and I'm thinking of kind of building our 
resiliency and being prepared for just circumstances that come up, including price increases. You know, if you can find a good deal, that's the time to stock up. But the way that I do it is kind of on a minimal basis. So I'm not trying to stock up on the highest possible maximum number of pounds of flour that I possibly can, because truly that could become exhausting and overwhelming. And we are so grateful for our, our farmhouse, but it's not huge. And so I'm always trying to be strategic and I know many of you guys can relate. Be strategic on where to store stuff, how to store stuff, and it's always a bit of a, you know, a puzzle game, right? To try to figure out where to store stuff. So I have limited space, so I have to use my best judgment to store enough for my family to have a, a year's supply without going over the top and having us like drowning in stuff. And you, it's everything is very expensive right now, so that's okay. You can only do so much. So I'm just gonna share with you the process of what we do. Okay, so for us, I when I am planning and I'm coming up with a meal plan for a whole year in case I needed to live off of what we have in our house, I am basing my stockpile off of four cups of flour a day, okay? And I know that seems like not very much, but we can make one loaf of bread um, and make that last for two meals. So for example, let's go through the numbers here. One, these are 50 pound bags. I have, I have, these are 10 pound bags. I have a bunch of different variety here, but one pound of flour is a little bit more than three cups, okay? So in a 50 pound bag of flour, I have around 150 cups. That will last me about a month or so, give or take, you know, based upon that four cups a day need uh, that, like to make a big loaf of bread for us. And so for me, for my family of eight, because of what I know that I've stocked up on when it comes to rice and oats and other whole grains or potatoes, all those different fillers that I have in my like mental meal plan as I'm creating my stockpile. So I need around 10, 50 pound bags of flour, give or take, for my family for a year, okay? Um, that's 500 pounds of flour, that's 1,500 cups of flour for one year. And when I break down the cost of my food, you know, because I like to hear, I, you know, I was speaking with some folks from Canada, some of our friends who are part of the Hartway Farms family, and when he was telling me, the, well, several people, when they were telling me the price of flour in Canada, conventional flour, not necessarily organic, conventional flour was quite a bit more expensive than even our organic flour in, in the States here. And so this cost me about $1.50 a day for four cups, okay, when I'm thinking my, my stocking up. And so if I take those four cups and we make either one big loaf of sourdough or one big loaf of crusty bread, I'm picturing in my head on a minimal scale, I can cut that loaf in half and each of us can get bread for lunch and each of us can get bread for dinner. And that's how I base it. I'm not trying to prepare and plan and stock up for three loaves of bread a day. Again, you have to choose your battles. <laughs> you have to choose what you can handle when it comes to stocking up for your family. When it comes to specific types of flour, my favorite flours to stock up on are all-purpose organic flours, if I can, or I really like uh, this, it's a long title. <laughs> I don't know why they came up with such a long title for first flour, but it's, um, it's from Azure Standard and it's called Artisan Baker's Craft 100% Organic Wheat Flour. And between that and um, I like the Country Life Naturals flour as well, but the Costco flour, I like to stack up on that all purpose because for the majority of the flour that we use, because it's, um, it's wonderful for uh, baking for even baking desserts and different things and then filling in the gaps with other flours like our spelt and our 100% whole wheat um, and kind of having some variation in your different loaves of bread. One of our favorite uh, breads to make besides sourdough, which is, I just told Julian this morning, I was like, Jules, I'm like craving some sourdough. We need to make a loaf because she hasn't made one in a couple days. So, um, but is to make like Marie's crusty bread with half all-purpose and half spelt. It's really good. If you haven't tried that, you need to go check out the crusty bread recipe and just swap you know, the, the uh, flour half and half and you'll really enjoy it. Just throw some spelts in there. Anyway, so when I am, uh, I have mostly all-purpose, again, a lot of it's organic, but it's okay if it's not. One thing I like about Costco 
is they have these 10 pound bags and this is the container that I keep up in my kitchen. Um, this holds <laughs> 10 pounds of flour and actually it needs to be refilled. So I'm gonna go ahead and refill it. And uh, I have done different things over the years. I think if you've been watching us for a little while, you've probably seen me pull up a whole five gallon bucket of all purpose flour because I also store it in there. Some of these are all purpose as well. But um, as far as what I keep up in my kitchen on a daily basis, I really like this. I actually got this at Walmart. I think it's a three gallon container. Oh, uh, this is what we use too in our in our water glassing. So anyway, I really like these. They're a bit of an investment, but it, I mean, they're they're really great. It has a nice easy lid, you know, I don't, we go through it so quickly, I'm not worried about airtight. So this works out really well. And the thing that I love about the Costco flour, not only is it a good price, that, but 10 pounds fit in, fits in here exactly, which is really nice. So it's an easy fill up. When I have a 50 pound bag, I have to get like a uh, scooper and fill this up. It's not a big deal, it's okay, it's just a little bit extra work. So the 10 pounds fits perfectly, perfectly in here and I just keep this in my pantry up here in my kitchen and it's just super handy to, to grab easily. It's only 10 pounds instead of 50 pounds. And I have these little containers in all different sizes. This is our uh, cocoa that we have from I think this is from Azure. I think this is the cocoa from Azure. So anyway, I couldn't remember if I got it from Country Life or from Azure. I like both stores. Um, so anyway, that's how we store it up in our, in our kitchen. Now I'm gonna clear off the table completely and I'm gonna show you what I do from the moment that I bring home my 50 pound bag of flour and the different steps that I take to prepare it for the storehouse. So when I purchase bulk flour, there's a process that I follow when I come home because I want, when I'm spending money <laughs> to invest in my family's future in it, by means of food, I wanna make sure that that food is preserved, that it's not going to go bad, that it's not gonna grow bugs, let's keep it real, that happens, you know? And it's funny because, um, I'm a, you know, I'll, I'll read people's comments that like, oh, I've never had an issue. Uh, with bugs in my pantry or moths in my pantry, you know, coming coming out of the flower and stuff. And the truth is, it's not an issue until it's an issue, and usually it's a big one when that happens. And trying to get rid of those critters, pantry moths or whatever, it's a big deal. And so my goal is to always avoid that becoming even an option in my pantry, right? So the process that I follow, I'm gonna share with you guys. So when I buy 50 pounds of flour, I'll bring it home. And we have, we do have several chest freezers. So that might be the only obstacle that might um, come up. If you don't have a chest freezer, then you're gonna have to follow an extra step. And I, I recommend always, always, always freezing your flour for a period of time before you put it into long-term storage. So whether you free, I'm gonna freeze mine in the 50 pound bag that it comes in. And this is just what we do. I take um, two garbage bags and I put one over the bottom. I keep it in the original packaging as well. And then I put one over the top and what the garbage a bag does, you could wrap it in saran wrap, whatever you have, but this is just the easiest way for me because I have these on hand and I can reuse these bags again. I'm not damaging them at all. I can absolutely reuse them as a garbage bag. But what this does is sometimes there is moisture in a deep freeze and I don't want anything to damage my flour that I spent, you know, our hard earned money on. So I put it inside those two bags and then I write on the outside whatever this this is so I'll say like so I don't lose track all-purpose flour then I will take usually more than more than one bag because I'm usually stocking up on something but I will take these and put them out in my chest freezer flat and you can fit quite a few of these on top of each other in a chest freezer if you have space and then we leave those bags in the freezer for a whole week. I know you don't have to do it that long, but why not? <laughs> I like to make sure that any little eggs or critters 
freeze <laughs> solid. And so we do this with flour, we do this with rice, and we do this with oats. Um, any, we don't do it with pasta, but pretty much any other bulk, like whole grains that we're stocking up on, we like to freeze for a solid week. So I'll put them in the chest freezer, and then I will bring them back inside. And on the day when I bring everything back inside, the house might look a little messy that day, because what I do then is I take the bags back off, and I just let my flour uncovered, because I don't want the plastic during this part. And this is just my, my own personal way of doing that. I would love to hear how you guys do it. I, my way is certainly not the only way, <laughs> you know? So tell me what you guys do. So I let it come back to room temperature 100%. Like I said, it's been in the freezer for seven days. I want it to come back to room temperature and then I'm ready to put it down in storage. So after my flour has come back fully to room temperature, no more cold flour, uh, I, I'm gonna show what we do. So we have a room in our basement that is what I would consider temperature controlled and uh, I call it the shower room, and that's where I put all my dry goods. If you have been following the channel, you know that we have a root cellar, uh, which I am so grateful for, <laughs> that uh, Josh renovated with the help of, of several of the children, and I can put all of my canned goods and whatnot in there, but in the shower room, <laughs> we, we call it that because there's a shower in there, an old shower. Um, in the shower room, we store all of our flour, and what I do, once that comes to room temperature, I like to take actually these totes and because you can, the nice thing about these particular totes is let's say you use up flour. I know you guys are probably like me where you can always find a use <laughs> for these types, types of totes that it's never a wasted investment. And so in these totes, I can fit two of these, I can fit a total of 100 pounds of flour in each one of those. And the nice thing is that they stack really efficiently. Um, so that's one way that I store the flour. Uh, we put these down in the shower room and we just stack them on top of each other. So that's one way. And then the other way, sometimes we will invest in bags of flour that are smaller, that aren't quite 50 pounds. So this five gallon bucket is great for long-term storage. It's food grade. And, but it, it only holds about 25 pounds. So I usually save these for when we purchase flowers uh, like in 25 pound increments or less. Then we will go through the same freezing process. And then um, sometimes, most of the time I will say, the, I will put the actual whole bag. So let's say it's a 25 pound bag of spelt flour. I will put the whole bag inside of here and seal it up so that it's just extra extra protected and we also like to put and this is kind of funny but um bay leaves are a natural uh, deterrent of critters and so we keep those usually spread around the root, the shower room downstairs so those are the two different storage items that i buy nothing is fancy nothing is perfect but it works for us and so i'm grateful for it and i also love that the five gallon buckets can stack on top of each other you know when storage space is limited, which it is for me, and I'm sure it is for many of you. I know some of you are even living in apartments and you have to be very strategic about where you can stock up and put stuff at, and that's, that's awesome, and I applaud you for making, making the effort to stock up for your family. And I know it's tough, so I understand. So we use these bins that st uh, stack on top of each other along with these that stack up, and it makes it really simple really easy. I labeled the outside so I know exactly how much flour is in there and when, when it was purchased so that nothing is going to waste. You know, when you are investing in food for your family, you want to make sure that you're doing it the best you can and that nothing gets wasted or goes rancid or bad or anything like that. Also, I keep the wheat berries as kind of like my ultimate stock up item. <laughs> On a daily basis, we do not grind our own wheat and I think that is awesome and it really tastes so good when you do do that. But um, because of our schedule and the season of life that we're in, it takes extra time. And so we don't have that time right now. So we don't grind our own wheat berries on a daily basis or on a monthly basis. So I keep our bags of wheat berries as like the ultimate backup supply, <laughs> just in case. And they have a, a great long shelf life. So that's why I do it. So I go through the ground flour first 
and I keep those as a backup. And actually one of the ways that we enjoy wheat berries is not grinding them, but actually putting them in like a, a long slow cook and eat it like a breakfast cereal. So anyway, all of those things are important to note. I mean, if you stock up only on wheat berries, just remember you gotta grind all of that, <laughs> which is great. If you have a really great meal, then that's wonderful. Um, so keep those things in mind as you begin to stock up and prepare for your family. Here is how we do flour. I hope that this was helpful to you, gave you some insight. I wanna hear from you, what you guys have going on. What are your goals when it comes to stocking up for your family? How much flour are you putting away? And we appreciate you all, and we'll talk to you all soon.